don't even move. <laughs> I said don't, and then what, you go, ah, ha, ha, ha. No, don't, because I have some news. That's just, it's a breaking news story. Apparently, um, Ellen DeGeneres has just bowed out as a judge on American Idol. I, yes, I know. I just, I'm just about to post it on my website, www.I don't give a rat's ass what you think. dot <laughs> com. No, I, I, <laughs> I would quite like to have a website called I don't give a rat's ass what you think. dot com, but I'd be lying because I do not. <laughs> but Ellen's gone, so who's going to be the f nice one? <laughs> Because Randy's special powers are uh, music, and then there's the other one, uh, Kiki Decanoa. <laughs> and then Simon's gone. So, and uh, who else is there? Paula's gone. So it's just going to be Randy going, You did good. <laughs> you were pretty good. <laughs> Doug, you were great. <laughs> It's going to ruin American Idol. Just, you know, I mean, I love Randy. He's been in many He's a nice man. But you can't just have Randy saying everybody's great. It, there has to be some element of competition. And I know there's the other one, Kiki Tococo, who is the... <laughs> but I can't... Even when she judges people, I kind of zone out. <laughs> it's like I was married to her or something. I just... <laughs> Every time she talks, I'm just like, uh, there's a bird. There's a bird over there. What? Oh, no, yeah, yeah. So, I'm just thinking I could do it, but here's the problem, I can't. <laughs> Two reasons. Three reasons, because I brought up three fingers, so I... <laughs> so I want to look like I had something in mind. <laughs> here's the three reasons why I can't be a judge on American Idol. One, I work for CBS. They would never allow such a valuable property as me out of their sight. <laughs> Thanks for your laughter. Two. Two. I am Swiss. <laughs> and we don't like to take sides. <laughs> and C, did I do A, B, C, or one, two, three? I did one, two, three. I see that's another reason I can't do it. Because clearly I would lose track of it. Also, to be honest, I could never be a judge in American Idol because I hate when people sing like this. <laughs> the damn song, but what's all this faffing around? <laughs> hey, 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 what? <laughs> you see, well, maybe I should be on it. I could be all angry and everything. <laughs> You're rubbish. I can do that. <laughs> we'll be right back. It's almost as if you understand English. <laughs> Why are we cheating? <laughs> it is part of tour. Discount. <laughs> hey, guess what? What? <laughs> I'll tell you, curious sort of predatory gay man. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> It's a great day for America, everybody. That's what I'm saying. It is. 
No, when I say, when I say, when I say it's a great day for America, uh, it is, but it is not such a great day for Earth as a whole. <laughs> Let me finish. <laughs> Scientists are saying that a giant asteroid could strike the Earth in 2182, and they say it will decimate the planet and destroy most forms of life. <laughs> a spokesman for BP said, been there, done that, what else do you do? <laughs> Also, it's true today, the news... The news from Hollywood today is terribly sad. Leonardo DiCaprio, oh, he's dreamy. He, uh, <laughs> he officially dropped out of Mel Gibson's new Viking movie. Mel Gibson doesn't know yet because everyone's afraid to phone him. <laughs> but tonight, though, is a big night in TV. Everyone's very excited. People in TV are all running around going, oh, oh. <laughs> because it is the season premiere tonight of the award-winning nature documentary, Jersey Shore. <laughs> Here we see the Guido searching for a mate. His, his leathery skin protecting him from predators. I actually have seen it. I've watched the whole thing, you know, because it was on earlier and we are live. Shut up. Ah. Now, the big twist this season, of course, is the, uh, the Jersey Shore takes place in Miami. So it's, it's, yes. <laughs> Nobody on that show cares about geography. <laughs> it's the Jersey Shore without without Jersey. It makes sense. It's on MTV. It hasn't played any music in years. It makes perfect sense. Anyway, a group... One, yeah, you get your little card out, yeah. Now, a group of Italian-American activists are saying that the Jersey Shore perpetuates negative stereotypes about Italian-Americans. The group is called the Association of People Who Never Watch The Sopranos. <laughs> I'm trying a new thing, by the way. What do you think? Oh, my. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. It's good. It's called patting the invisible midget. <laughs> anyway, they say, sorry, patting the invisible li little person. <laughs> what does it matter, Craig? They're invisible. It matters to them. <laughs> anyway, this <scene. laughs> This season, the, the producers of the Jersey Shore are, uh, have added a new character to enhance the parade of Italian stereotypes. Take a look at this. Paisan! Prosciutto! Upa! Stavago! What's a coming ago? That Mario looks nice, doesn't he, eh? He can clean my pipes anytime. That's right, I'm gay for myself. Pop my trunk. <laughs> now, on the Jersey Shore, they've got, they're big with the nicknames on the Jersey Shore. Like, for example, if a girl is called Jennifer, she becomes J-Wow. <laughs> I don't understand it either, but there's a guy on the, uh, on the show, he's got a gentleman who calls himself The Situation because his abs are so impressive, uh, impressive they, they qualify <laughs> as a situation. <laughs> well, it doesn't make any sense! I also have a nickname for my abs, they're called The Capitulation because <laughs> I just kind of gave up, so... Now, the real breakout character from the Jersey Shore, though, is a young lady called Snooky. Snooky is known for having, uh, you know, the, th uh, the, the thick, heavily sculpted hair. I, I didn't notice because I'm not a leg man, but, uh, the, but President <laughs> Biden... <laughs> oh, shut up! was on The View this morning and they actually asked him about Snooky and Obama said he had no idea who she is and of course he doesn't I'm like he's the president he doesn't have time to watch the Jersey Shore then again he didn't have time to go on The View <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> I've been on The View <laughs> anyway there's no escaping this Jersey Shore thing you, you can even buy bobblehead dolls of the Jersey Shore cast you know they're cheap plastic mostly useless and so are the dolls but uh, you can buy them. 
Now, if you're not familiar with the Jersey Shore, you're probably wondering, well, what are these the dynamic young people? What do they do that's so interesting that well, it captures the nation's attention? Well, I'll, t I'll tell you what they do. Nothing. <laughs> this is true, seriously. They, they live in rent-free rent and they spend their time drinking and tanning and punching each other in the face. <laughs> I, wait, you know what? I've already made it sound more interesting than it actually is. <laughs> now, to be fair, I don't want to be too hard on these brain-dead herpes incubators, but it can't be easy. <laughs> It can't be easy, though, being followed around by cameras 24-7. I'm glad there weren't cameras everywhere when I was in my 20s. I'd have been arrested. I'd, I'd have been arrested more. I would have been filmed being arrested there. I, I'm a little concerned about the Jersey Shore cast moving to the Miami, though. I like Miami. I like that amazing mix of Latino and Caribbean cultures. I've been there. I like hanging out in the boardwalk, the South Beach, watching the rollerbladers glide by, their perfectly shaped asses tucked into the thongs. <laughs> And the women aren't bad either. Uh... <laughs> My hope is that the Jersey Shore kids get a little classier after spending time in Miami, like that other famous Miami resident, um, Scarface. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello to my little friend, Snooky. <laughs> Say hello. <laughs> Say hello to Snooky. Here we are. She's only four foot two, ha. You know, the thing about the, the Jersey Shore, though, it may already have hit its peak. The cast is famous now, uh, and, they're, and they're now they're self-aware. So psychologists call this the Hawthorne effect. Once a subject is aware of being observed, the behavior inherently changes. So the cast members will now have their agents and managers going around, and when, when they get into fights now, it'll be, I'm going to have my people punch your people in the face. It'll be like that. <laughs> it's lost all its whatever it had when I wasn't watching it last season. <laughs> I feel a little bit out of touch. I haven't seen any of this. I only, you know, I only watch, you know, I only see what you've probably seen, which is like people on the news and stuff. I don't watch the show. And then I think, well, shouldn't I watch what everybody else is watching? And then I think, why? <laughs> I think, well, then you'd be able to talk about it and go, I don't need to know. <laughs> I'm on TV. You don't need to know what you're talking about. You just... <laughs> We'll take a break. We'll take a break. Uh, and during this commercial break, while you're, uh, you know, getting advice about which excellent product you may need, I am going to be studying about the next thing I'm going to talk about. <laughs> tweets and the emails, so many to get through. We just don't have time for them all, so I wouldn't bother doing any of them. <laughs> this is from Zachary in Woodmere in Ohio. Zachary says, uh, Dear Craig, is it just me or has Jeff Peterson been getting a little too chatty lately? Aha! Uh -huh. Finally! Someone noticing. You have been very chatty. Have you been taking your diet pills? <laughs> Uh, right. I hate it when you're sarcastic. Top that. I can't. All right, this is from Ramiro in Chicago in Illinois. Uh, Ramiro says, uh, hello, Craig. I like to be nude sometimes. Is that all right or creepy? Ramiro, it's a situational thing. If you like to be nude, uh, uh, you know, at home, you know, when you're having a bath, I would say that that was entirely appropriate. If you like to be nude sometimes at the library, then I think that would be, be a little creepy. 
<laughs> All right, this is from uh, Ileana in uh, Dallas in Texas. Um, <laughs> says, uh, Ileana says, Dear Craig, my bedroom is so boring. So boring? <laughs> what should I add to make it better? Keep in mind my room is small. Is this code for something? <laughs> uh, well, if you've got a small bedroom, you can often cheer it up with a, with a, you know, a pet. <laughs> yeah, you know, a parakeet or a, a, a hamster or a bear. <laughs> hey, you could add Ramiro from uh, Chicago. He enjoys... Uh, <laughs> He enjoys being nude sometimes. Maybe you'll be quite happy. Mind you, if it's that small, you might have to butter him up to squeeze him in there, you know. Man, just turned myself on a little bit there. Uh, right, this is uh, from Kevin in uh, Houston in Texas. Um... This is from Julia in Massapobergie in New York, and she says, uh, it's a tweet. She says, hi, Craig. Do you think it's weird when girls ask guys out? <laughs> Can't say as I've ever encountered that. <laughs> nah, it's not weird. Help yourself, I often say. If girls ask me out, I say, no, I can't. I'm married. <laughs> Well, that's what I say now. Back in the day, I used to say, I can't, I'm gay. <laughs> I don't even, that doesn't make any sense. You've got them on the ropes, Mr. F. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, Jeff. I don't know. I know, it's, it's kind of you to say so, Jeff, but I don't think so. I think, I'm, I think they're being kind to me. I have no idea. That doesn't make any... That last thing I said made no sense. And that, that's kind of your area. I'm doing my best. Well, all right, I know, but I'm, I'm saying... And by this, when I said your area, I didn't mean to bring up your area. I know it's a sensitive... Pop my trunk. All right, that's enough. Uh, all right, well, we don't have any time anymore now. Um, so, there you go. <laughs> yep, the, the comet's coming, that big thing's hurtling towards Earth. It's gonna be here in about, what, um, 70 years or so, they reckon? <sighs> so all that's left to do is wait. <laughs> do you ever think scientists just make... Uh-oh. <laughs> This guy, oh, there's a comet coming. We're going to need a grant. <laughs> well, I got comet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Excessive clapping. We don't have time. There's a comet headed this way. We want to get 70 years to pack in all the fun and stuff that we can. So, my next guest is a star at, of screen and stage and TV and magic and he's got a Twitter account. Oh! He's in the Cats and Dogs movie, The Revenge of Kitty Galore. It's in theatres tomorrow. He's directing Rent at the Hollywood Bowl on August the 6th through the 8th. He does it all. Please welcome Neil Patrick Harris, everybody. Neil. Peggy Perg. You look it's nice. Honor. You look lovely. Thank you. I, I usually wear a suit, so that's nice that you say this. I yeah, feel a bit so underdressed. You've gone a little cash tonight. Is that because you're a director now? I expected you to wear a, a sweater over your shoulders. A hoodie? 
Oh, no, no. Isn't that what directors wear? No, the skateboarders wear hoodies oh. and the directors. In theatre, the director wears the sweater over his shoulder and goes, over there, love, right now. <laughs> Yeah, I just wear the jodhpurs and have the big, the big, uh, what is that oh, called? Oh, yeah, the, uh, the big voice make yeah. you louder a thon. Back yeah. to one, you're terrible! <laughs> Are you having a good time I'm in directing the in the 1930s. Yeah, that's good. Is it a 1930s venture of rent? <laughs> That'll be interesting. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's nice. Say, nice Mac, who's back. living in that apartment? I'll tell you who. <laughs> AZT, never heard of it. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, that's yeah, not funny. Weird, uh, that's funny. Yeah. Less funny. Yeah, well, it's you know. one of those things, you know. Uh, so how's it going? Uh, it's well, going really well. Hollywood Bowl, that Hollywood be Bowl, nice. 18,000 people. It's just three performances. We're rehearsing this week, and next week we put it up, and it's Fast and Furious, and it's going to be really good. Fast and Furious, too. So it's a combination Comment. of Fast and Furious. Cars, car jumps. Cars, cars come on stage and car help jumps. people. And uh, Vin Diesel sings out tonight. One day, maybe. One day. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, so, uh... No, it's cool. I mean, I, I, did, I was in Rent uh, when it was in L.A. I played Mark, and uh, now I'm able to direct it, and we have a bigger cast than normal. We, we've nice. added 10 people to the cast. We've added, like, seven or eight people to the orchestra. Now, when you've added 10 people to the cast, does that mean you've added characters that aren't normally there, like when they added Scrappy-Doo to Scooby-Doo? Yes. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's exactly right. Like Scrappy Doo is now in rent? That's yeah. bad. I don't know that this is the way to go. We added Grimace from McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, uh, the little red-headed kid from Different Strokes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 well, I can't brought them on. I wonder what happened to that red-headed kid. <laughs> Danny Bonaducci. Oh, was it really? No, no. He, he, Daddy was much earlier than that. He was Partridge family. He, by that time, Daddy was in his 50s. <laughs> During Partridge Family? Yeah, Daddy was actually in his 50s during the Partridge Family. Wow. That was the secret that he tried. That he was his secret that. shame. Yeah. No, do you know Daddy? Uh, I don't, but he scares me. No, no. He, <laughs> you should be frightened of Daddy. Daddy is fantastic. He's really, he's very, very nice. Every time I, I see an interview with him, he's, he's talking about like, uh, oh, yeah, one time I, I hammered a, a, a screw into my skull. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got yeah. in a fight with a guy, and I, I broke his teeth off, and I chewed him up, and I swallowed him. <laughs> yeah, He's gonna, adorable. I'm box. That's true. <laughs> it's true. I'm gonna box vanilla ice and drink his blood. <laughs> like. You're gross, dude. No, he's, 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 not, he's, he's not gross. Not gross? No, no, he's lovely. He smells a bit like biscuits. <laughs> I wouldn't have expected that. It's the surprise Bis everyone gets when they meet Danny. <laughs> They're like, who's making biscuits? And Danny's like, it's me. <laughs> Oven mitts. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been? What have you been up to? Apart from work. Apart from work? Yeah. What else? Um, I filmed the Harold and Kumar 3 movie. That's work. Yeah. yeah. But not rent work. Yeah. yeah. Harold and Kumar 3 in 3D. Really? <laughs> why? I, I wonder why they would put that movie in 3D. <laughs> 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 yeah. It was great good times. I think uh, it's uh, raw and disturbing, and uh, I think fans of the first two should like the second. It's Harold and Kumar, it's, that's weird. But what have you, have you been doing any not working things? You ever I took done? a uh, road trip. We filmed that in Detroit, oh. and my better half, David's from Detroit, so we uh, flew our dogs out there to be with his family while we were filming the thing, and then we took a road trip back from Detroit with the pups all the way to L.A. Really? Do you let the dogs drive? <laughs> Come on, it gets pretty quiet out there in some of them states. You can let the dogs drive. I've done it. We've all done it. It's the secret thing we all do when we drive across the country. They were actually super mellow. I thought there'd be, I, you know, that's like 37 hours. That's a, a healthy drive. Right. And it's like a, it was a heat wave was going on, and so you couldn't really stop anywhere. And, and let the and, dogs have a pee or a poop. Well, you could do that, but then you couldn't go, go have a, you know, have a meal or, or whatever because or the dogs had to stay in You know, in, in England in the now they're giving ice cream to the dogs? Is that I right? Was I was talking about it in the show last week. They, they're giving ice cream. Right. Ice cream to the dogs. Ice cream to dogs. It's a big story. Big story. It's all over the news. But I would have thought Fre uh, Fred, who's our Karen Terrier. A Karen Terrier? A Scottish dog? Yeah. Oh, Named Fred, appropriately. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> Scottish name, Fred. 
Not really. Not so much. Fred was, when he was younger, was a bit of a puker in the car. Oh. And so that was awkward because he'd throw up. <laughs> and you'd see it happening, you know. He'd be sitting on the lap and you'd sort of see it. <laughs> you'd see him kind of getting ready and you'd reach for the plastic bag or whatever and try and catch it. But, uh... Cause <laughs> Did he puke on the way back on this No, one? he was puke-free. But that's because, you, it's because you didn't stop and feed him, though. He was starving. No, no, that's what it was. Everything was good, but it was, you know, it, uh, with the heat, if, if nothing is worse than throw up in a car uh, times 100 degrees for two days straight. But you're from there Albuquerque. There's none of that. I'm from Albuquerque, which is a great non sequitur. No. It gets very hot in Albuquerque, yeah. and parts of that town smell like vomit. <laughs> Albuquerque. No, go to Albuquerque. It never smells like vomit, ever. Hey, listen. Uh, no, Albuquerque has no greater advocate in the American media than me. I, every night I talk about this. I love Albuquerque. I love the Rattlesnake Cup. Comes from the Albuquerque Rattlesnake Museum. I love your parents' restaurant that I've never been to called Perennials. Perennials right, in Albuquerque. <laughs> but there is no denying the truth. It Certain parts of Albuquerque <laughs> smell a little bit like vomit. <laughs> That is a bold-faced lie, Craig it Ferguson. It is a lie, Take but I'm taking a firm stance on it. Jeff, Jeff, we well, need to tell us. What is it? Does any of it smell like puke at all? No, no that's what I'm no, saying. No. He's never been to Albuquerque. He's, He's never even been outside of San Bernardino. Jeff's kind of fetching, by the way. I love this man. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just like that every time he talks now, his hand kind of looks like he's touching his junk. Hey, Craig. <laughs> what is that? It's because he's stuck out there on his own. If he gets too close, he'll touch somebody else's junk. That's what happens. Oopsie. Yeah, oopsie is right. I love Jeff. He is. He's very nice. Yeah. yeah. How are your, how's your parents' restaurant doing? Still o open all the year round and it's called Perennials because it's open every day of the year? Look at that. It's not open every day of the year. That's the problem I have with it. It is open every day of the year. Is it really? Yeah. We used to be closed on Mondays, and now we're open on Mondays just because you had a problem with it. <laughs> Christmas Day? Not Christmas Day. Christmas Day! Christmas Day! It's you Christmas. can't call a restaurant perennials if it's closed. Even on Christmas Day? Even on Christmas Day. Well, I'll tell you, perennials is doing quite well. My father is no longer involved with perennials because it was just too much work. And so my brother. Uh, Brian has sort of taken it over, and we've sort of done a, a relaunch of it. It looks much nicer. The food is a simpler menu and, and fresher food, and it's uh, and it's great. I think you'll what love it. What the hell happened to you, man? You asked. I'm saying it's you're good. You're plugging our, your uh, family restaurant in Albuquerque. You just asked how the restaurant was. Yeah, that's true. I did. But I, but I'm, do, I'm manufacturing fake anger. It's what Regis oh. does. It's very good. <laughs> Why? Not really. Not really. I don't know. We took a. Um, I can tell you about more about the road trip. We took a. Oh, okay. uh, we Come stopped on, midway, uh, and we and we stepped at like a Radisson Inn. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Did they advertise the CBS? Well, they do now. They might. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they was won't it, was it good? To. No, it wasn't very good at all. Ah. It was nasty. <laughs> Second floor. <laughs> you had to wear socks because the carpet was kind of sp speckled and sticky a little bit. And not in the good Ouch. way. Yeah. yeah you're right. telling me, Jeff. So that was no fun. We stayed there. So then we drove all the way through the next night and stopped. We ended up in Vegas. Oh, Vegas is clean everywhere. Nowhere in Vegas. <laughs> There's no vomit smell there. <laughs> well, <laughs> you haven't stayed in too many clubs in Vegas late oh, night. Oh, man, it's very vomity there. Very vomity. <laughs> Well, we're out of time here, pal. Are you? Yeah, well, Have you seen I, these things? What, what? Oh, yes, my son's very into these. Have you seen these things? Yeah. They're like the new craze. They're like the new jelly belt, the new... Gel it's like Justin Bieber in elasticated form. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they all make shapes, and so I have four of them. This one I'm very excited by. It's a rabbit because I'm a magician and I like magic. <coughs> you do? You still, uh, you still hiding rabbits down your pants, that kind of thing? Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> The whole out of time one, thing, you weren't really interested in This one's in a pineapple. That, That's a pineapple, because mm. I like pina coladas. Oh. And uh, walks in the rain? Sometimes. Okay. This one's a dolphin, because I love dolphins. Oh, really? I don't care for dolphins. I prefer sharks. And this one's a rooster, because I love... Hey!
21.82. Welcome back, everybody. I have fantastic news. I miscalculated. I said the uh, Earth was going to be destroyed by the giant asteroid in 70 years. It's actually 170 years. So kick back, relax. <laughs> Panic's kind of over a little bit. <laughs> Although, if you've got anything pressing, you might want to get on it. <laughs> My next guest is CNN's chief medical correspondent. He's got several upcoming specials starting in mid-August. Please welcome the lovely Dr. Sanjay Gupta, everybody. Sanjay Gupta. <laughs> Dr. Gupta! It's an honor to be back. It's Thanks lovely for that me. you haven't been here for ages. Where have you been? Uh, you know, I've been busy CNN? doing a few things. I think I had three kids since I last saw you. Wow. Yeah. So. Well, you've kept your slim <laughs> figure. <laughs> you've got, you're actually very, very thin looking right now. Are you all right? Uh, no, I feel great. You know, I've been I've been uh, exercising a lot. Oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you, you too. I mean, you. No, you, I just kind of stopped eating. <laughs> Well. No, I lost a bit of weight too, but you look, I mean, are you, uh, what are you doing? Uh, no, I, I did this triathlon last Sunday in uh, what? New York City, yeah, I, uh, I turned 40 years old, and uh, I've been busy, and I said I want to uh, make some changes, so. Um, so you, know. you lost some weight, you having a midlife crisis? No, no, I, <laughs> my wife watches your show yeah, every night, yeah, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little bit, maybe. Do they keep you at CNN because of Larry King? <laughs> <laughs> so like, quick, Dr. Gupta, get in here, Larry. <laughs> Larry's doing great. He, All right, he feels okay. fine. He's, he has the look of a happily retired man. You know, yeah, he's yeah, he's, show. he's, he's leaving. Yeah, 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 no, he's, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's, he's lovely, Larry, actually. He's very nice. He's guy. been on your show a few yeah, times. Yeah, he has. Yeah. Yeah. Did you help him with... Because he, was, he wasn't as gassy when he was here last night. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like he's really kind of... I told him not to talk about that. All <laughs> right. So how are you? What are the specials you've got coming up then? What have you been doing? We, uh, you know, it's been a busy year. I you know, was in Haiti uh, in the beginning of the year and then just right. got back there... Uh, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, um, but I've, I've been working on a few things. There's, there's this place in in Washington, uh, near, near Washington, called the uh, the Institute for Undiagnosed Diseases. They, wow! They have this place where they literally, if there is someone who has a problem, a medical problem, right. and no one can figure it out. I mean, they literally have been any, any, everywhere. They go to this this special ward where they have all these docs and these special tests, and they try and figure out what's going on with the that person. That must be kind of challenging. It, for it, the, yeah. Well, it must be challenging for them, but it must be challenging for, for doctors as well. Yeah. Because you guys don't like not knowing what the answer is, right? Well, you know, I, I think doctors like puzzles. And, right. and, and they, they, these are the ultimate puzzle solvers. It's, it's kind of like, you know, the real life house, you know. The, yeah, the, yeah, right. And, and it, it, it is, uh, it, it's amazing, uh, you know, to, 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 to walk in place of last hope, no one knows what's going on, and finally get an answer to, to your question. And so that you, uh, did you get any, did you undiscover any undiscoverable yeah, diseases yeah. when you were there? <laughs> I helped out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but mainly we were, we were showing how a place like this works, you know. Right. Where, you, know how you, you, you still practice though, right? I yeah. do, yeah. yeah. No, I, I'm, you know, I'm a neurosurgeon, I'm, I'm practicing, uh, which, you know, it's funny, straddling two, two lives now, medicine and right. media. People ask me that a lot. Are you still practicing? And right. I think um, because I do some work in the news and the media, right. I, I appreciate medicine even more than I ever did before. Like, I, and, and it's quite, for a neurosurgeon, it's, you, you're limited to the amount of hours you can do uh, uh, these things, right? Uh, isn't that right? There, there's, uh, you have to do a certain amount of hours a month or something? Well, now, now they have uh, regulations for the residents. You know, when I, when right. I was training, you, you, I mean, I literally would train 110 hours a week. Wow. I mean, it, it was your entire life. It was an entire decade of my life. Right. But now they, they can't work more than 80 hours a week. So oh, well, there you are. There man. It's a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> now, hey, you perform brain surgery. Now. I do. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you uh, do you listen to music when you do that? Like, because <laughs> people do. Right? I, These are long operations. I, this is a very serious topic, actually. Oh, right. The music, yeah. You are, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have. A... <laughs> oh, Craig, you're so stupid. Am I, Doctor Gupta? Am I? <laughs> I, uh, I I have these. Uh, so we do we do uh, operations of the brain and the spinal cord. Right. So I have different playlists for if I'm doing a brain case mm -hmm. versus a spinal cord case. Uh, I have a playlist for when I'm opening at the beginning of the case versus when I'm closing. Really? And a different playlist in the middle. Where does so Justin Bieber come in? Today? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to get added now. I got three yeah. daughters, so I'm right, sure he's going to yeah, get added yeah, into yeah, my. Uh, yeah. 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 So how long does I mean uh, I, I suppose it varies wildly from procedure to procedure, but how long would you say you'd be in a uh, in a surgery for something like that? 
Uh, and, you know, the longest case that I, I probably do is around eight to ten hours. Good lord! Yeah, all day, and and uh, you know you don't stop. I mean you can't. Do you have to go to the? I no, mean, you got you got you got. I mean you you really have to you have to pace yourself so you don't drink a lot of fluids in the morning so you don't right. have to go and and uh, the nurses often will 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 squeeze like Jolly Rancher candies into your mask so you get a little bit of sugar while you're operating and. Wow. Do you ever ask them to do that when you're not? <laughs> As soon as I said that, I knew yeah. what that was. <laughs> you forgot where you were, didn't you, Dr. Gupta? Yes, uh, I know. Could I have my Dublone tone room removed? Is that... That's right. No, so you, 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 have, you can't go to the, the hair looks great, by the oh, way. Oh, they're touching great. Yeah. yeah uh, do you... <laughs> Me too. I'm getting, I'm getting it. Just, do people ask you if you dye your hair? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, well, it's crazy. Why? Everybody must dye their hair. Because right? I have plenty of gray. Is that what you're saying? It's right, crazy? Yeah, 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 no, it's coming yeah, in. You have a little bit. You don't have much yeah, gray. No, you're only 40. I'm 48. With the next eight years. I'm telling it's you, coming, eh? they will <laughs> ravage you. Why? What happened? I don't know. I just, you know, I get snow on the roof. I've got snow in the basement. I think you know what I'm. <laughs> Me for, you're what a is, doctor, for goodness sake. I'm not, yeah, but I'm still not sure if I know what that means. What, what? Snow in the roof, snow in the basement? Basement. Is... Well, well, doctor, it's a comedy term. You probably wouldn't understand it. It's uh, to do with the aging process. Why does your hair go white, actually, as you get older? Ah, that's an interesting question. Well, you, you, there's melanin that makes your hair dark. Right. And you start to lose the melanin. But I found out you also, it, melanin just gradually withers away from your hair. But you right. also get air. In, in the hair itself. Air? Yeah, so I don't know if you, if you notice that you're, you become an airhead, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stop. But, yeah, but your hair, I mean, your hair feels different as you get older. It does, yeah. Yeah, that's because yeah. of the air in the hair. Air in the hair. <laughs> air hair. This is like a Danny Kaye movie. <laughs> really? Your air gets, why? Well, but, you know, I grew up in Scotland. There was air there as well. And, uh, <laughs> right. It was different air. It was very damp air, but it was there. But, but you weren't as old. So, no, I mean, I wasn't. Your, your hair gets a little bit more brittle, and air can get in the in the hair. Oh, and gets it's, in between it and, and kind of dries it out. Is it gets it right in. The air goes into the follicle itself, so your, yeah. your your hair actually is full of air. Right. It's uh, and um, that no, makes yeah. it feel coarse and go gray. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. What, what about? You? I mean, if you're wearing pants, you don't get air. In. <laughs> <laughs> Again, yeah, no, I had to. You keep me thinking. I yeah, I tell you, you want to undiagnose this conditions, doctor. <laughs> Let me talk it through for you. Well, listen, uh, it's lovely to see you again, Sanji. Thank you so oh, much for coming. Always enjoy it. It's so I, uh, please, uh, let's not leave it so long next time. It's been too long. Well, you did pretty well without me. You look great. No, I'm all right. I, I need a checkup. All right. <laughs> Dr. Sanji Gupta, everybody. <laughs> If you're watching Craig at home, you're missing half the fun. Consider this your formal invitation to laugh live in our studio audience at a taping of The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. Please give us a call at 323-570-0059 or visit our website at oneiota.com. What did we learn on the show tonight, Craig? I think that cat gets his hair dyed. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to think who'd be a good judge on American Idol, and I can't really think who it'd be. I thought maybe Anderson Cooper would be good, because... <laughs> he would. He... <laughs> Looks a bit like Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> I've just pissed off everybody now, haven't I? I didn't mean that. <laughs> Bill O'Reilly! He would be awesome! Bill would be awesome. No, he'd be good. I, I think actually Bill would be a good judge on American Idol because he strives to get his opinion across. <laughs> I actually am quite serious. I'd quite like to see someone like that do that. I think, I think it should be Bill. Bill, it's you. <laughs> the middle of the night TV has spoken. <laughs> All right, well, uh, Bill will probably post that on his website, www, I don't give a rat's ass what you think, <laughs> dot com, and then send it to me. All right, well, I'm done here. That's, uh, the show's over. Um, I'm a bit worried, though. It's only 170 years to that asteroid. <laughs> I better go and pack.